nowadays the interviews are becoming very tricky and we should have the ex expertise in the domain to crack the interview this uh, series i have prepared with 25 interview questions related to cisco sd van so let's start all these questions one by one let's start with question number one what is that uh, so maybe it can be asked that what is sd van explain various components of sd van means uh, you have existing network then why you are going to uh, ex expend money and you want to upgrade the network uh, to sd van what's the benefit we have with sd van now what interviewer can expect here that we should give him the top features in the sd van so he uh, obviously gets satisfied the first point we have and if you go and see different type of sd van designs you will find that industries and companies they don't want to have their data centers they don't want to have their own it infrastructure but they are very much prone to host everything in foreign location so for example cloud so they don't want to manage the entire data uh, data center because of the specific specification of data center area or the area should have uh, proper cooling cleaning cabling power etc etc so overall there is uh, operational cost there is expense to manage the data center rather than what they want so that's why these all these cloud solutions are very popular nowadays either it's uh, aws or azure or nowadays google as well that uh, uh, when we are using cloud resources so at that time uh, we are not investing much for the for developing or uh, to invest much uh, in design for the uh, say infrastructure in-house infrastructure or on-premise infrastructure that is one way of cost the other way of cost you can think is that uh, say for example mpls circuits now everyone knows that mpls circuits is quite expensive i personally have seen designs uh, and we can think this as a modern network design is that uh, in SD WAN, you have control plane and data plane. Not only control plane, but management plane and orchestration plane. You have uh, what you can do that you can decouple. We know that SDN is decouple of control and data plane. So you can decouple this and you can host over Cisco Cloud. Again, Cisco is using, or they can use any of the uh, cloud to put their con uh, controllers. So they can install their controllers over AWS. Now, what I am responsible is to manage the data plane devices maybe vh and ch now instead of mpls link what i can do that i can go and use the internet link and uh, again i told you that personally seen that instead of so for example 100 mb uh, mpls link nowadays it's common de facto that companies they are using 1 gb internet link and even the cost for 1 GB link for internet is less than 100 Mbps MPLS dedicated link. So on that we can see the operational cost even the uh, cost for the MPLS versus internet uh, is quite interesting. So companies are looking to save the cost so that's why they are looking for the sd solution. Apart from that you can see the reliability and uh, SLA but uh, more so we can uh, argue that uh, we have better visibility in sd -WAN. You have one common dashboard from there. You can manage your entire sd -WAN fabric. So that's one of the nice thing we have Now when we are talking about the reliability and SLA that we can track the SLA We can check the reliability of the circuits. Everything is transparent and visible from the management plane Again cloud integration is there so we have inbuilt feature say software as a service and infra as a service and from same we manage dashboard we can track the feasibility or the health score for the saas hosted application and uh, iaas hosted application as well 100 percent this is secure 
Cisco SD-WAN is the most secure one we have. So now you can see that you are getting the features related to cost, related to visibility, cloud integration, security, and then finally we have the app route policy and app firewall policy. So not only that we can create the policy related to IP addresses, subnets, etc., but we can leave those things. We can leave IP addresses and those things uh, apart, but we can create policies related to application. So for HTTP, for voice, for other bulk traffic, uh, for high, uh, say for example, critical mission critical application or high sensitive application, we can give some more bandwidth. We can prioritize some higher bandwidth link rather than the low bandwidth link. Again, uh, we have option that if we have zones, by default we have zone based firewall in the uh, SD-WAN solution. So we can integrate and we can do the app route uh, firewall policies as well. Okay, now so maybe the fo follow up question. So once you explain all these things, follow up question may be that how you can do this. Obviously, uh, when the how thing is coming, that means the uh, the interviewer he want to go in, uh, deep inside your knowledge. So how means say for example if you are creating the cloud related policy. So for that you should go to we manage and you should go to configuration and then you will get options related to cloud on ramp for SaaS and cloud on ramp for infra as a service for this. For security, again, we have a different dashboard. So inside policy, we have security policy. You can go and provide the security policy. For app route policy and other policies, whatever policy you have, again, policy is divided into two parts. You may have localized policy, you may have centralized policy. Local policy, global policy, you can think like that. So anyhow, the policy that you have to create from we manage you can go and go to the policy section you can create the policy this will get get pushed to VS smart and then VS smart will go and push to we edge if it is a data policy it will be downloaded control policy will reside at the level of the smart okay so this was the interview question one and the solution as well uh, you can refer this video if you have any doubt you can obviously play pause you can uh, redo these things over the video player all right so let's just stop here and we'll go to the question number two now the second interview question may be that what type of branch design we have with Viptela? now different different vendors they have different type of combination or they have different type of uh, design so for example if you read uh, some of the books you'll uh, find that few of the uh, vendors they are categorizing their branches so for example as a uh, platinum as a gold as a silver and bronze so what does it mean by platinum gold silver and bronze is that here you have high level of redundancy then you have mid level of redundancy low level of redundancy and you may have one router so what does it mean it means that in a branch you may have two routers and then you are behind the firewall behind the firewall and then your traffic is going in and out now the mix here you can see and this is just a hint that you may have mix of MPLS so you may have MPLS both or you may have say for example right here so you may have MPLS you may have MPLS internet or you may have internet correct and that's true for uh, platinum and that's true for gold as well so gold design may be that your router is directly going outside maybe you are making these ISR router as a firewall so all the rules that you that you are running to the internet edge firewall, maybe Palo Alto, maybe Cisco Firepower, or any type of uh, uh, internet gateway firewall. So in gold, you may have high level of redundancy, means you have two routers, you may have mix of all, 
but you are not using firewall although you are going to run all the firewall services over the virtual image of the router or over the router then you may have silver where you have uh, one router with two link and again uh, these all all these links are uh, having the possibility like this and again you don't have firewall or maybe there are chances some of the design they are telling that you may use the uh, data center firewall to redirect the traffic etc again it depends that uh, what uh, security policy is there and how you are going to terminate your link and then finally you have branch that you have one router and then you have one link either mpls or internet okay so this is the way that uh, branch designs are mostly the branch designs are and again there may be some other use cases as well but these are the high possibility use cases uh, branch uh, branch designs that we have at this point of time okay third interview question we have is that to list out the methods for application optimization in sdwan now we know that sdwan we are using at this point of time has major benefit with respect to existing wan and we have so many inbuilt tools to do the application optimization that doesn't mean that we can't use the external tools or we can't integrate the external optimizer so what are the main tools we have and here you can see in the hint section that in terms of optimization that is inbuilt in sdwan we can go and use the fec forward error connection now what is forward uh, error correction is that suppose when you are sending the packets and remember uh, in cisco sdwan we are dealing with the uh, per flow mechanism not per packet but few of the vendors so for example silver peak they can do per packet load balancing as well but in cisco sdwan we are at this point of time we are dealing with the uh, per flow uh, load balancing or per flow application that is going from one place to other place now when we are talking about fec at that time what is happening that whenever you are sending the packets at that time you have parity or you can think mirror of packet so suppose you are sending one two three and four and for those one two three four it depends that how much label of parity you have suppose if you are using 50% or 30% so for example 50% means two of the packet you have copy as well so suppose if packet number 2 will get lost then you have the uh, fec means you have the copy of a packet that can be used rather than you will go and reestablish the tcp connection because we know that uh, tcp if any packet loss is there again it will go and do the retransmission so this is one of the way to provide the high resiliency uh, this is one of the way uh, that will actually boost the traffic flow or it will optimize the traffic flow now it is not recommended that if you have a problem with the bandwidth or you have or if you have less bandwidth if you have congestion at that time if you use fec it will go and even make things uh, worse okay so fec will be used in those links where you have sufficient bandwidth first of all so it will enhance the performance now next thing is the tcp optimization again if you have two devices and one place you have the source one place you have the obviously the destination now this source and this destination when they are doing the transaction for the application or when they are working as a server client model suppose one is the server and one is the client so at that time they are not thinking that in between they have some network or they have to go through the network so in that case if you are using tcp optimization obviously these devices will work as a tcp optimizer optimizer and they have some sort of cache or they have some sort of algorithm in between that whatever latency there with respect to lan so this lan and this lan latency obviously 
then you have the WAN connection. So WAN latency will be very, very, very much higher than the LAN latency. But still, these devices will do some sort of TCP hand checking in between. And they have some cached buffer. So the overall performance will be very much good. So this source and this destination, they will think that they are directly connected source and destination because the optimizer in between TCP optimizer in between is going to enhance the uh, or it is going to boost the traffic flow. Now again, there is one catch that this is not a good choice when you have the asymmetric flow. So traffic is going in one way and it is coming via some other path. So when you are designing your routing flow, you should think about the symmetric flow whenever you are going to use the TCP optimization. Uh, optimization. Now again, we have the application aware routing. That is one of the key function of SD-WAN. Why we want to use SD-WAN? Because my SD-WAN, so either it's a Cisco V Edge or Viptela V Edge, or it's a Cisco C Edge, and nowadays Cisco also using uh, Viptela operating system in their ISR routers. That is model is 1100. That you can go and check. So either it's a V edge or it's a C edge. In both the case, in V edge actually they have the engine known as Cosmos, that is the application recognition engine or DPI DAP, deep packet inspection recognition engine. And C edge, the popular term is NBAR. And again, Cisco has done lots of improvement in NBAR inside NBAR 2. So we have more number of application added inside NBAR 2 and uh, inside the NBAR 2, if you go and check their uh, design, you'll find that we have something called fast processing, uh, fast recognition of applications as well. So Cisco has done tremendous work on NBAR 2. Even nowadays, we have the VMs, virtual machine for NBAR as well, uh, that you can go and check from the Cisco download software side. All right, so what is happening in this case that whenever application is flowing, these devices they are intelligent enough to learn the metadata of the application and with help of those metadata we can go and create either application aware data policy or we can go or create application aware firewall policy as well and again this will provide the optimization inside the SD-WAN. so we have these three inbuilt method apart from that for cloud hosted application uh, we have cloud express that's the engine say cloud express and the term that cisco is using nowadays is cloud on ram for software as a service so for example office 365 or any cloud hosted application and then cloud on ram for infra as a service that is your services are hosted over popular uh, cloud vendors like aws or azure or google etc so in that case uh, these devices, let me clean the slate here. So these devices, these devices means this V edge or C edge, they can work as a gateway device. They are working as a gateway device. And with help of Cloud Express, at this point of time, up to eight applications, they can do some sort of load balancing. So suppose going via one gateway, the loss latency jitter is not good then it will go and redirect and it can go via the other gateway. So some rerouting, some performance analysis, uh, analysis, everything will happen because for those applications, for those SaaS based application, we are sending some sort of HTTP packets just to check that the application is live or not, application is up or not. And then we are determining the loss latency with us with respect to OMP Cloud Express, that's the term we have. And then according to that, it can go and do the, uh, can do the change in the routes. Okay, so now you can see that you have four very important method. Apart from that, we have QS and how intelligently we are going to apply the quality of service. So either it's a QS for the WAN interface in the in and out direction, or QS for the LAN interface, how we are doing the marking, how we are doing the classification, etc. Okay, so these are the uh, inbuilt features that we have in the Cisco SD-WAN. 
okay now next to this what are the other stuffs we can do so maybe uh, in interview you can get the follow-up question that how the tcp optimization we can apply so we can apply over the device as well means you can think like conf t global configuration mode or you can go per vpn and then you can apply per vpn as well so that's the model model of application then how we can go and apply the app route policy and qs now in the modern code like 19 and 20 those codes you can go to the vmanage there you will get the option to create the policy inside the uh, say for example inside the data policy you have app route policy even inside data policy you have qs policy as well but qs policy can be used as a device specific configuration as well next very important question uh, can be asked that what about policy what type of policy we have inside the stvan and who has the authority for these policies now we know this cycle that we have we manage as a management plane we have we smart as an intelligent device in the network and then we have the data plane devices like v edge or maybe ch so this is the order now this is the intelligency this is the brain say in, in inside the stvan but what we have to do that we can go and use the gui of v manage and we can create the policy now this policy will be pushed to v smart and then v smart will go and push those policy to v edge or c edge now suppose if it is a data policy the v edge or c edge will go and download that policy if it is a control policy then it will go, go and reside at the level of vsmart so when we are talking about policy we have two different type of policy we have control policy and then we have data policy now both the control and data policy can be centralized and localized so these policies can be centralized and these policies can be localized now the very important difference between the control and data policy is that control policy is unidirectional data policies bidirectional data policy will be downloaded by the devices control policy will go and reside at the level of vsmart and that's the term we have cae configure apply execute at the level of vsmart that is control policy and then you have CA configure apply at the level of uh, V edge pardon at the level of V smart and then the execution will happen at the level of V edge that will be the data policy okay so that's the key difference we have between the control policy and data policy now control policy at this point of time you can think that is the routing policy and routing means we know that the vsmart understand only one protocol that is the omp so omp related attribute and routing policy will come under vsmart policy correct so that can be the answer for this this question but still if you want to learn more about that so again so for example i have policy and then policy has control policy and uh, this uh, policy is control policy and data policy so for example let me try to read uh, one more time so we have the policy and this policy is control policy and data policy again the these are centralized localized so let me write here localize centralize and localize now the central centralized control policy is itself a control policy where you can go and do uh, so for example route leaking service chaining traffic engineering etc now this uh, localized control policy may be uh, local to the device as name suggests the localize so they may be any type of uh, route policy or route filter etc etc 
now when we are talking about uh, centralized data policy so example will be app route or any type of data policy data policy name itself data policy can be a centralized data policy now when we are talking about localized data policy so that may be qs that may be any type of ACL that may be port mirroring okay so that's the difference uh, we have the first portion of this question what is control versus data policy in the given list okay so if we have the list suppose if someone will tell okay i have list of policy like app route uh, c float or net flow i have data policy i have vpn membership policy uh, i have control policy and inside control policy again you can define so many policies correct so this app route c float data policy they are data policy vpn membership policy and control policies are the control policy okay so that could be the answer for this question and uh, that's it so let's just stop here now the next tricky question question number five may be what is packet out of order in sdvan and how is sdvan solve this issue now this may be not related to cisco webtela but this may be related to other sdvan solution for example uh, silver peak because silver peak is purely or they are creating purely optimized solution and the code or the algorithm of silver peak is used by so many vendor or so many vendors they are using silver peak optimization code now silver peak is also in the sdvan market and it's doing good and the concept actually belongs to silver peak sdvan packet out of order so suppose if you have your optimization device and then you are sending the packet of obviously in order but because of two different isp so for example one is mpls and one is internet somehow you are sending per packet load balancing or, or some packets you are uh, sending via one link other packets you are sending via other link other tunnel so when packet will reach here and maybe they reach by suppose you have sent one two three four but they reach four three to one or one two etc how you are going to reassemble this because this is in not in order so from here the packet four three goes from here one two goes and because here you have lost latency jitter so to reach the packet in this particular place there may be delay so that's why your packet is not in the order of one two three four and that's the mechanism called packet out of order now silver uh, silver peak devices they are basically for uh, not only for optimization but uh, they are very famous with the optimization techniques and all so they are somehow keeping track of the packets that if it is in out of order they have the capability to reassemble the packet at the destination and then it will go to the end host or end machine okay so that's the issue we have packet out of order uh, Cisco SD-WAN can use this method if we can go and integrate uh, maybe Cisco optimization technique or Cisco optimizer. Uh, in Cisco ISR, we can create, uh, we can install virtual images or we can have the container for optimizers. Or we can use Cisco uh, standalone uh, app optimizer. So options are there. Or we can use some other third party optimizers as well who can assemble these packets if the packets are out of order okay so this is the answer for this particular question again if you want to learn more about packet out of order you can just do a little bit of uh, search uh, some sort of google and you'll find some more explanation about POC, uh, packet out of order uh, this actual term is p o o c p and double o n c packet out of order okay all right so let's stop here uh, nowadays it's uh, very common 
in the interview that uh, people can ask you that what type of licenses we have in SD-WAN and why we should use one versus other. Now here we can see in the license that we have three different type of license. So for example, we have DNA essentials, we have advantage, we have premium. Uh, the question here is that that DNA is uh, something that used in a campus fabric and SD-WAN is a WAN technology. First of all, why Cisco has given this DNA name uh, for uh, uh, their licenses. The Cisco long-term goal is this that uh, from DNA GUI, that is the DNAC, uh, in final integration, once you reach to, for example, they have phase one, two, three. Once you reach to final phase, and once you integrate DNA with SD-WAN, so then from DNA GUI, you can manage your SD-WAN resources. And that's why we, they have given this DNA option inside their licenses. Now, if you want to learn more about this capability and licenses, you can go and check this URL. So let me quickly go and log in or uh, open this URL. So let me open that. So here you can see the URL and here you can see all those three licenses. We have Enterprise Secure One. Let me quickly scroll a little bit up. So you can see those uh, licenses name and details. So here you can see that you have essentials, you have advantage and premium. Now, if we are in the premium, that means each and every feature of SD WAN will get supported. Mostly, people are not using essentials because they have base features. So you can see, think that basic uh, and then advanced and then uh, very advanced like that. So basic and advanced and then you have advanced plus license like that But yeah, uh, most of the companies they are using advantage license obviously uh, The other side also you can go and check that what is the cost as well? So here that advantage versus premium What's the main difference? So in advantage you can see that it is supporting the van edge centralized management unlimited segmentation and the cloud integration both uh, software as a service infra as a service Colo facility van optimizations we have the analytic and assurance analytic again that is the v analytic then they are supporting cisco sig essential something like uh, security group tagging and then they have the cisco thread grid sandbox integration these two features you can see they are there in the premium so they are not there in the advantage and maybe uh, different companies they have different type of uh, security option so if they are using some other vendor like non cisco security options or if they have those options then the best option for those enterprise level industry or companies that they can go for dna advantage all right, so these are the licenses and the use case we have and uh, this could be the answer for this question uh, Next question is quite tricky. Although it's a very small one but uh, It's actually very interesting explain the hardware and software types in SD-WAN now if someone don't know that we have mix of so many different type of hardware and capabilities So he can caught in the interview now starting with ENCS that is enterprise network compute system So what does it mean suppose if you have a virtual branch means you have branch But you have put all the virtual image so for example uh, either CHVH plus you are using third-party vendor uh, virtual software like Palo Alto or maybe F5 load balancer or any other optimizers as well. So in that case, you can go and use ENCS. If you want to learn and understand more about ENCS, you can go and refer ENCS 5100 and the data sheet or 5400 data sheet. You will go and get the list of the capabilities that it is giving inside the SD-WAN. Next, again, if we come and see we know that the evolution of uh, SD-WAN is Cisco SD-WAN is from Viptela. So that's why you can see that we have the Viptela hardware, so VH 
100,000, 2,000, and even we have 5,000 as well. Now, if you want to use new hardware and if you want to use some less cost hardware, you can go and use VS. VS devices are also great. And they are supporting, because they have the native SD-WAN image, so they are supporting almost all the features that we have from day zero inside the SD-WAN. So it is good, stable, and it is sub supporting so many features, actually all the features in SD-WAN. Now, Cisco has added some new features as well. So for example, security related features that is not added inside VH. Again, you can go and compare the chart VH supported features plus Cisco CH supported feature or CH supported feature. And you will get the information, but you can't do the security inside the VH, although you can create the June based firewall. Now, when I'm telling about security and why the ISR devices can do the security features because ISR devices, they have very good amount of RAM. There you can go and put some sort of secure virtual images. And with help of that secure virtual image, you can go and take the role of IPS IDS or URL filtering or AMP, TG, etc. Okay, so that's capability and feature that ISR is giving with respect to security feature that is not there in VH, but there are so many features that is supported in VH or that is supported more precisely inside WIPTL operating system that is not supported inside the ISR or ASR. Okay, so for example, cloud uh, related features or for example, uh, tracking to the WAN interfaces. So these features are not there in the uh, ISR, uh, ISR or ASR routers. Now here you can see that suppose a customer has a requirement that he want to use Viptela operating system inside Cisco hardware, correct? So at that time you can go and use ISR uh, 1100, 4G and 6G. Now they are supporting native Viptela OS and native Viptela OS means the native SD-WAN code. On other hand, the iOS XC supported platforms like ISR and ASR, where we have to go and patch the code for SD-WAN. Okay, so one place you have native operating system, other uh, other place you have the uh, code patching. So obviously you can understand the baseline feature in between that. Now again, if you if, if your requirement is very high throughput, so in that case, you can go and see that uh, the ISR 1000 and 4000 and uh, uh, ASR 1000, the throughput capabilities, the ASR can support from 2.5 gig to up to 200 gig, g, uh, gig PS, GBPS. Uh, so that's the thing that if you have the high uh, throughput requirement you can go for ISR and ASR now you can think that okay what is the throughput for ISR ISR is still supporting a less uh, throughput you can check the data sheet uh, maybe in range to 1 to 10 uh, gig but if your requirement is more than 10 gig again you can go and check the data sheet for that uh, you have to go and use the uh, ASR all right so the next portion of this question is what about the software you can go to this link and you can go and check various type of uh, image various type of image means that various update in the code we have so now the question may be that which one we should use say so with respect to edge devices you can go and check the uh, say ios sd van or v edge routers you can go and check the uh, images uh, with respect to that. So for example, if I go to ISR 4000 and SD-WAN software, here you have the patch for iOS XC. These are the iOS XC and uh, the stable version. Obviously we are going to use the stable version. So in 16.12, we have a stable version. In 16.10, uh, we have a stable version. It is telling that you have some issue related to 17.21R. Okay, so you should go and read the data sheet uh, before going to use these hardwares, uh, this software over the hardware, correct? Now let me quickly go back uh, and let's go and check 
the image related to the controllers so if i go here and see the image related to stvan and i am looking for vmanage so here you can see that cisco has released 20.111 as well again you can go and click here and you can go and check the release node as well with 2111 is target only for customer using cloud and ramp for co-location or v branch so already i told you that cisco is not supporting all the features inside the isr correct and in the upcoming release cisco is giving the customer new features so here you can see that 211 is target only for customers using cloud on ramp for co-location or the uh, virtual branch or nf vis still it is not supported in is as cloud features but yeah in the even in the cci blueprint we have 18.4 image and this is a stable and long run image or you can go and use the 19.22 as well okay all right seems my session is time out but uh, the question is also get answered so these are the things that we can tell uh, for this particular question question number eight is very important and this is the sure short question that you're going to get in the interview explain ZTP process what is the difference between the ZTP and PNP so that's the reason what I have done that I'm going to give you a great explanation about this and obviously you can go and refer the Cisco documents as well now when we are talking about ZTP so let's just start with ZTP this diagram is related to ZTP you can see that you have a step number 1 to 11 so first of all you power on the device then it will go and take the DHCP DNS it will go and contact with the say for example ZTP.Viptela.com or ZTP.Cisco.com uh, this is the public orchestrator or public vbond or public server uh, where you have all the information and how the information will fit inside gtp we'll see in the next slide then it will go and contact to the local vbond so at that point of time this uh, vh device he don't have the system ip he has zero or null ip now the vbond will offer the vmanage address and once the VH will start communicating with vManage. vManage has to push the template configuration template. And once vManage will push the configuration template, we know that we have five mandatory things inside that at least. Then he will get, he means the VH will get the system IP and then again he will go and contact the local vBond. And again, if suppose the image is not up to the mark again it will go and contact with the vManage it will uh, got a reboot again the configuration will get pushed once all the DTLS tunnel or once the control plane tunnel is up and running then this device will go and join the overlay fabric or the Viptela fabric all right so this is uh, the explanation that is expected Maybe it can be asked that, okay, you're going to connect uh, V edge thousand. So what port you want to connect so for that? You can refer the document some hardware. You have to connect with gig E zero slash zero some hardware. You have to connect with gig E zero slash two some gig E zero slash four. Okay. All right. Now the second question is that, okay, so what is the difference between ZTP and PNP? ZTP is zero touch provisioning, PNP plug and play. Now the term plug and play that com came from uh, Cisco because now we know that Cisco devices also supporting the uh, SD-WAN fabric. So iOS XE uh, based devices like Cisco uh, ISR devices. Now here you can see in the diagram. So first of all, here you can see on the top that Again, the same thing will happen only instead of ZTP.Viptela.com, it will go and uh, communicate with devicehelper.cisco.com where you have the PNP server. But now it is, things has been changed. You have to go and create the smart account at, at the level of, say for example, software.cisco.com. Once you go there, you have option that you can glue different type of virtual account with a smart account. 
Now, once you have the smart account or maybe once you have the virtual account, then you have to go and click to plug and play portal. In the same page, you will find one link related to PNP portal. Now, new portal will pop up where you can go and put the device list, all the uh, Biptela supporting or SD1 supporting devices you have to put there. You have to go and create the controller profile as well. So once you do all these things, means once you put all the information to the plug and play portal, then it will automatically sync. In vManage, we have that uh, option to sync the information. So it will go and sync the serial number, the uh, the file name, the hardware model, whatever information that we are going to put there. And the same thing will go and sync with the ZTP server as well. So that will be here, you can see that will go and help the edge devices and the PNP is going to help the are going to happen with the Cisco devices. Now again, I have uh, two more slides so that will clarify the thing. Now we have deployment model. So what type of deployment we want? We want automated. So for Cisco IOS XC, we have PNP. For Viptela devices, we have ZTP. If you are going to use some sort of bootstrap configuration, for that we have IOS XC. If you want to do the manual configuration, so for manual, means manually you are doing the configuration. So man, for man, manual configuration, you have the support for both IOS XC and S device. Okay. So this is actually important. And again, we have one chart here. So here you can see that iOS XE device onboarding option. Where is plug and play bootstrap manual supported? Which hardware is supporting only bootstrap? ISR 4K supporting actually all three. PNP bootstrap manual. 1K also supporting all three. Then about this VS devices, VS devices they are supporting ZTP and manual process. Now this will be the answer for the question in detail. One of the favorite question in interview is that, do you know what is underlay and overlay in SD-WAN? And can you explain me where is underlay, where is overlay? What is the boundary between the underlay and overlay? Now, once you answer this, uh, then maybe the follow-up question is, so can we redistribute in between the underlay and overlay and vice versa? So let me give you the answer. The overlay protocol is OMP, that is Overlay Management Protocol. Behind the scene, if you go and check OMP, you'll find that it's very much influenced by BGP, or in loose term, you can tell that uh, it's like custom made BGP. So taken uh, attributes from BGP and then added the attributes of SD-WAN, and then we have the Overlay Management Protocol. Now the OMP protocol is the only protocol that my control plane and we know that control plane is the VS smart. So VS smart is understanding only OMP. Now in this diagram, you can see that since VS smart is understanding only OMP and then again OMP has their rules and responsibility like OMP can exchange different type of data. So OMP can exchange uh, different types of uh, OMP routes. So actually there are three types of OMP route. One is, say for example, service side VPN route. One is services. So services means firewall, load balancer, etc. any type of security service. So those route. And third one is the T-lock route, transport locator, uh, location or locator routes. Now in this diagram, you see that although we don't have firewall here, showing but you will see that yep you have service site prefix a site one prefix and then you have three different transport internet MPLS and 4G now at this point of time we know that T lock is transport locator and it has three main attribute system IP color and encapsulation so here you can see the system IP and then you have different color for different ISP, say color green, uh, orange, blue. And then uh, encapsulation here, you can see encapsulation maybe internet, uh, MPLS, 4G. So actually the uh, color, again color, we have, uh, you can think that uh, custom made color option we have. 
color is also not uh, not some uh, networking term but it's uh, again it's not a label as well so again you can think here how deep we are going in the st van color is not a label but color you can think as an abstraction of isp at this point of time so for example different isp we are denoting with different color your system ip is unique and then color may be same there are chances but at least one of the term say for example system ip color and encapsulation uh, one should be unique anyways that's a t log but again in t log we have certain attributes other attributes as well so now what is happening that uh, all these edge devices they are omp pair with the vsmart now vsmart is working as a route reflector so once you send the update to vsmart it will go and reflect that route to all the remaining uh, all the remaining sites all the remaining v edge so what does it mean it means that site a prefix the vsmart will learn from three different path or from three different color and then same he will go and advertise the other site that means the other side so prefix b can reach to prefix a with three different uh, color or three different path say if all the attributes are same then it it can do ecmp with three different path okay so now you can understand here that where the overlay fits in where the underlay fits in underlay is your t lock and the underlay protocol is your igp protocol so maybe in the service side vpn you are running uh, eigrp ospf or maybe bgp as an underlay those things those igp we need to redistribute with omp so how it is uh, we can do the mutual redistribution suppose if you want to call omp inside ospf go to vpn 10 router ospf redistribute omp like in cisco we used to do suppose you want to send ospf inside omp go to omp so here you can see the command is vpn 10 omp and then you can uh, uh, use this command advertise ospf external okay so the answer for this is that, that suppose if you are able to draw this picture then it will become very much easy even who is taking the interview to understand that you know this these terms and these terminologies all right so let's just stop here again question number 10 is quite important that explain the route control option in sd-wan and in other term that what is the central policy and the local policy now if you go and check i will find that we have two different type of policy that we can create as a policy inside that we have control policy and we have data policy now interesting thing here is that uh, either it's a control policy or it's a data policy we know that we have again two option so we have option that this control policy may be global or it can be localized actually the term is globalized localized again the data policy may be globalized may be localized so that means that policy is global control policy or localized control policy now control policy you can think at this point of time is very much like routing policy and we know that uh, whenever we are talking about the routing in SD-WAN we have uh, the VSmart that they are understanding they understand only OMP correct so whatever OMP routes we have so for example three types are there OMP uh, you can say that service side VPN route or OMP route you can say services route like any security route and then finally you can tell the T-Lock routes so you can play around with you can do some sort of service chaining you can, you can do some sort of filtering blocking etc etc you can play around with these attributes of omp when you can create the control policies related to either localized policy or globalized policy uh, when it is coming to data policy now this data policy and this data policy that means that actually the 
edge devices will go and download this policy now again data policies they are useful data policies like app route policies uh, netflow or c float policy qs policy etc so once you explain up to this point that what is control and data policy again there are some difference like control policies unidirectional data policies bidirectional and one of the key thing that in interview people will look for you is the term called cae so where you want to go and do the configure apply and execute just the term c a e if the execution will happen at the level of edge those policies are data policy so data policy itself is a data policy control policy itself is a control policy okay and now maybe uh, as per the skill level uh, they can ask you that okay tell me that how we can go and create the policy and what will be the direction of policy so that's actually very easy in cisco viptela stvan that first of all you have to go inside policy framework so this list that is the interesting traffic so you may have data prefix list prefix list site list t -lock list vpn list whatever traffic classification you have that will fall under list now that will glued to type of policy what type of policy data policy control policy app policy vpn etc so a plus b that means this is your policy but you have to apply this policy and the third section here you can see that apply policy remember apply policy is 100 percent of time applicable or applied to the site list whenever you will go and apply the policy you have to go and apply to the site list now the next very interesting aspect of this policy is that what will be the direction of policy so suppose control policy is unidirectional so you are applying in or out remember out means from vsmart to vh in direction means from vh to vsmart and that's the significance of the direction so i hope that you understand a very important points related to policy and uh, you can utilize this information question number 11 list out high availability option in data plane now data plane means that your vh or cs devices and the data path and we know that data path is via the ip set tunnels now here you can see in, even in the answer also that uh, what are the high availability option we have so generally what we are doing that you have multiple links so link level redundancy device level redundancy isp level redundancy and site level redundancy you can do like that so achieve full redundancy now say for example uh, uh, if i want to have the control plane redundancies uh, that means suppose if you have less number of uh, isp connected with one device or maybe one isp with one device and still you want that you can borrow some other control plane so at that time you can go and use a t lock extension option although this is not very good high redundant option but it's still uh, we although we have uh, physical one physical link that but we can feel that okay we have a one physical and plus one borrowed that means we have two or maybe three physical links depending upon how many t-lock extensions you are using then obviously we can do the ecmp with the protocol we know that uh, protocols can do equal cost multipathing so if you are using layer 3 protocol say for example uh, igp or bgp as an underlay uh, in that case we can have the redundancy in terms of protocols as well we know that vrrp is also providing first of gateway redundancy or first of redundancy protocol and you can create certain groups group abc for some group uh, the router a will be primary for some group the b will be primary like that you can effectively load balance across the gateway bft is nice thing and i have separate question for bft means what type of bft we have but what bft is doing what's the final goal of bft at the moment you create at the moment you your data plane will come up and running your ipsec tunnel will start forming at the moment your ipsec tunnel is formed to check the liveliness 
even sometimes the health as well and that's true a statement that we are <clears throat> monitoring the health of application that is going via the tunnel with help of bft that we'll see in the uh, next slide next question actually so at this point of time just to check the liveliness of the endpoint tunnel or the tunnel endpoint we have the bft and how bft is providing redundancy obviously you are tracking the tunnel in that way if one tunnel is down obviously uh, it will fall back to other tunnels or it, it, it was doing ecmp and th then the load will shift to other tunnel if any of the tunnel is down now there may be follow-up question that okay vrrp so now you're telling vrrp is there any difference between existing vrrp and the vrrp in st1 and the answer is yes the vrrp in st1 that we are using where we can track the omp so remember the vrrp that we are using with existing van where we can track the isp interface decrement the priority etc those type of things tuning we can do with hsrp and vrrp but vrrp in st van that you can track the omp means you can track the control plane and even further we can track certain prefix that is be beyond or behind the uh, behind the omp now suppose if that particular prefix you are tracking is unreachable that means it will mark that omp is also down and then the other device will become active forwarder or it's become the master and he will forward the traffic so that's the difference we have in the vrp uh, in st1 and again you can refer the document as well if you want to know more about this but this will be the sufficient answer for this question related to interview the sure short question that you will get in your interview is that uh, what are the different modes of bfd and what is the use case related to bi-directional forward detection why it is important and uh, do we have any other usability of bft like that so maybe same question in different different styles people can ask you now bft is very important as we have discussed in the last uh, session that bft at the moment your tunnel is up and running it's the responsibility of bft that it can track the tunnel now on other hand it's the responsibility of bft that suppose if you have uh, app route data policy or application route data policy again those applications that is using the tunnel so who is going to check the loss latency and jitter glued with that application that's the use of bft we have so bft says so suppose bft is uh, a type of hello packet as well who is checking the health of tunnel or in other other words you can tell that at least the liveliness when we are talking about bfd hello packet here uh, in the chart you can see that we have three flavor of bfd running inside st1 one is the hello packet what hello packet will do it will go like how icmp echo request and reply is working you're sending the echo and then you are getting the reply and then you can measure the round trip at least one way uh, one way or one side loss latency jitter correct now suppose if you send five ping packets means five echo request and echo reply like by default routers are doing and then they are giving who what is the minimum maximum and the average of the uh, loss latency jitter you can say or we can say that a round trip uh, loss latency and jitter etc likewise bfd is also doing but it is doing in much more effective manner because first of all uh, it has the timer of one second obviously all these uh, timers that you're seeing here are tunable you can go and change that one thing important here that bft is per color so suppose if you have two isp color or you have two link with two color that means you have two bft going via that, those channels that means you are sending two independent uh, BFT packet, BFT hello packet to reach out. Now think like that, this, that you are sending some application and for that application you have certain SLA parameter. So suppose voice application where loss latency jitter, you have given very less. It's very, say for example, uh, latency sensitive application or it's a very much, say, delay sensitive application as per SLA, so who is going to measure? So that's the answer 
that BFT is going to measure that. Uh, when we are talking about one way, at that time, BFD hello packet will check one way lot loss latency and jitter. But suppose uh, you have to examine or you have to collect certain number of samples and then you have to decide on an average basis. So for that, for sampling reason, we have the bucket feature of you can see that we have the bucket option. That's the Paul interval. That's the uh, second, actually the third column. You can see the uh, when you when we are coming to the row let me try to highlight here so you can see here this is Paul interval of by default 10 minutes that means you are going to sample 600 BFT packet and those on top of those samples obviously 600 BFT packet then you can take the average of loss latency jitter correct again the configuration is there how we can uh, increase or decrease this these are the default setting now the last thing we have is the multiplier so suppose uh, you have one bucket of 600 sample but is still with time means obviously if the time will pass that bucket uh, will exceed so uh, to have the history of that bucket or to collect all those buckets we have this multiplier means the device they have some sort of buffer and they are having six different you can think as a bucket of 600 bft uh, not 600 bucket but six bucket uh, let me correct myself six bucket each bucket having 600 samples and then we are maintaining the history of the average of loss latency jitter Correct. So that's the correct statement. Now here you can see one second and then 10 minute and then six uh, multiply means six into 10. That will give you 60 seconds. That means one hour. So one second, 10 minute and one hour. And that's the uh, BFT types we have. Remember here is that uh, BFT that first option hello packet is per tunnel, but uh, the Paul interval and the multiplier are per device. Question number 13. What is the difference between feature template, device template, policy template, and security template? And this question may be a little bit confusing because uh, we have so many different type of features and uh, where to use what for any of the new guys. It may be a little bit a learning curve. So here you can see that, uh, let me try to draw here. Give me a moment, I will draw. Say, for example, you have feature template. Uh, let me write here feature and template. Let me clean and write. So what's the use of feature template? Feature templates are very small, small templates that can be reused inside a device feature template so device feature template this is the actual configuration for any of the device and again this device feature template also we can reuse so here you can see that you can reuse first of all the feature template even you can create variable inside device feature template that also can be reused so now you can understand that device feature template can have n number of feature template now when we are talking about configuring the device, so let me go up. You can use the feature template or you can use the CLI template as well. Remember this thing. So you can have CLI template, you can have device feature template, and then you can go and use n number of feature template. Now again, when we are talking about device feature template, so let's focus here because this is going to be uh, configured or this is going to be pushed to the device so what is the hierarchy that we manage is using a protocol netconf to go and push the configuration say for example device feature template to n number of vh plus vsmart correct great now you can go to the v manage and you can create security template as well 
you can go to we manage and you can go and create policy template as well okay so now we have do, uh, these two term policy template and security template and where it is going to be used now this security template is part of device feature template so device feature template you have big template and if you go and see in bottom you have something called additional configuration here you can go and use the security template so again that means the vmanage will go and use netconf to do this configuration but when we are talking about this policy template so you can go to the vmanage label you can go and create policy template but this policy template will get pushed to vsmart and then vsmart will go and push to vh okay as per the site list so you can see that how much difference or variations we have here uh, we have vmanage and at the level of vmanage you can create say feature template you can create device feature template you can create security template you can go and create the policy template now this policy template so policy template will go and push to the vsmart and vsmart is using omp to go and push to vh here the underlying protocol again is netconf now for this vmanage you can create ft or dft and remember fts are part of dft so this device feature template again it will use netconf and again this security template is a part of dft that will go and push to the vh directly okay so that's the importance uh, uh, with respect to templates we have and that will be the answer for this particular question next qualified question we have is that in secure sd van what security features we have what are the things we can do over the isr routers with respect to security so answer here is that cisco sd van supports all sort of security features we can go and create firewalling rule although this is true uh, with vh as well so c as a cisco and vh as a viptela so c as and vh both we can go and create the zone based firewall rules but in c edge we can go and create amp related rule advanced malware protection url or web filtering ips ids rule and then we can integrate with cisco umbrella as well although v edge also we can integrate with cisco umbrella so what are the new features we have you can see here new and advanced feature uh, like any next generation firewall we have amp a web filter ips ids correct now the next very important thing here to understand that uh, that these uh, devices these devices mean the isr devices where we are going to enable the security features they are actually not security device so that means we need some extra virtual image so these devices can work as a container or over these devices assuming that we have the container functionality and then we can go and install some other image related to security and that's the virtual secure image uh, can be downloaded from the same place from where you are getting all the software related to sd -WAN. so you can install this again there is one very important point so suppose uh, you go to we manage because from where you have to create the policies your policies you have to create from we manage and suppose if you are coming to from palo alto world we have panorama as a central off mode uh, controller or gui from there you can go and push the configuration to the different uh, say for example palo alto firewall same say for example we have firepower where we have fmc firepower management console from where you can create the policies and you can push to ftd correct so likewise here also we manage is working as a central console or central manager where you have to go and create the policy now what will happen in this case 
So first of all, you will install the virtual image at the level of uh, vManage, and then you can go and create the policies related to AMP, URL, etc. Now, once you create the policy, obviously you have to push the policy. How it is going to be pushed? Again, in the device feature template, you have one option for security template. So you can create the policy in the security policy template feature template or security feature template section. Then that policy will go inside the uh, device feature template. So that's your template part. Now, once you go and use the netconf, means we manage will use netconf to push the policy to the ISR devices. Once you go and push the policy, what will happen? Because these ISR devices, they don't have virtual image. So first of all, they will contact to vManage. They will download the v, uh, They will download the virtual image. So this will take time. So first time when you are creating the policy, it may take 20 to 40 minutes. Why? Because first of all, he has to, or the ISR or the endpoint devices or edge devices, they have to download the virtual image. Once they download the virtual image, then they will go and install the policy or then they will go and write the policy over that virtual image and then whatever flow related uh, things we have it will work that i will explain in the next question that what is the difference between app aware routing and app aware firewall that we can check but yeah that's a very key uh, thing and it's a very important thing that what will happen that when you are creating the policy it's not like that FMC or Panorama that you create the policy push and within a few seconds it will go and push to the selected devices First time it will take time next time onwards when we'll go and create the policy. It will be faster Now we have tricky question question number 15 What's the difference between application aware routing and firewall? Can I apply app aware firewall? Uh, within the same VPN or VRF Our this question is very interesting. We know that one of the core capability of SD-WAN is that they are supporting application aware Routing So application aware routing this is one of the data policy that you can create so certain application will go via MPLS certain will go via internet fallback, etc. So this is one of the capability now the question here is that how how the sd band devices can do either app route or app firewall uh, policies how they can do so the answer is this that the devices they have something called dpi deep packet ins inspection now these dpis say in viptela that engine is cosmos and in Cisco ISR, we know that's a famous term in bar network based rec application recognition. Sometimes Cisco is referring as a AVC as well application visibility control. So this is the engine. What is happening whenever the packet is coming and hitting to the device, they can learn the metadata of that application inside the deep packet inspection. Now your DPI engine can learn recognize the application and then either you can go and apply or create the uh, say app route policy or you can go and create the app firewall policy okay so that's the answer of first portion first part now the follow-up question is that okay so your answer is correct that is supporting app aware firewall so when i have vpn say for example service side vpn vpn 10 and then suppose i have vpn 20 so can i go and apply the app firewall to the same vpn or different vpn see you can go and apply to the same vpn the firewall rule that's there is no problem but at the moment you'll go and apply so you can take say zone source zone for example as VPN 10 and then the destination zone as VPN 20 
that time suppose if we have only firewall rule this will not work before applying the firewall rule you should have or you must have the route leak policy so the vpn 10 can leak the route to 20 and 20 can leak the route to 10 and then only you can apply the firewall policy if in case of intra zone communication all right so that will be the answer for this particular question let's just stop here one of the good question may be that what is the difference between or similarity between TPM and TAM? Now we know with the evolution of V edge hardware, we have trusted platform module that is nothing but the TPM chip. Inside that, vendors are pre-loading the RSA certificates, and that can be used whenever the vendor will ship that device to the client or to the business unit. Uh, at that time they will go and deploy those devices and then they will get authenticated so it will cut down the number of certification uh, steps or the process uh, because in certification if you check controllers the number of steps are more than the uh, the physical devices or then the s devices why because already certificates are uh, the RSA at least the certificates are there in the TPM chip now on other hand you can see that with the CH devices with the Cisco devices we have Cisco secure boot uh, method and that's the TAM so the same chip module not exactly same but same type of concept we have uh, with Cisco uh, ISR as well where you have trusted anchor module now if you go and do a little bit of search about trusted anchor module you find that Cisco is using this anchor module in other hardwares as well so for example UCS uh, unified compute system so there also Cisco is using and maybe in other uh, Cisco routers and other switches also will find that Cisco is using this why because of uh, to protect the hardware so here you can see in the step number one up to four that before the actual OS will get launched. So what's the order of operation that your micro loader in general, uh, the process will start from a step number two where you have the micro loader program. That's a small program which is helping to boot the operating system. Uh, like that you have this uh, boot loader, so micro loader and then the boot loader helping to uh, start the operating system or run the operating system but before that we have so here you can see the micro loader is uh, anchored or you can see some sort of a screen via the anchor a small anchor module program who is going to do some sort of uh, code label check some sort of uh, sanity check you can see so that's the thing we have that in case of uh, hardware protection uh, we are using this uh, anchor module and again you can see what is the difference between TPM and TAM uh, both have different type of program but overall uh, the goal is to protect the hardware question number 17 what's the importance of v1 in Cisco ST1 fabric is this forming TLS or it is using the TLS channel now again uh, this type of question may be underrated and may we think okay because of uh, all the devices in a network in at least with respect to control plane they are very secure so they should form tls tunnel instead of ttls now what is the difference between tls and dtls is that tls is tcp based ssl dtls is udp based ssl so if you go and check the specification of tunnel you'll find that the vsmart and vmanage they can have option they can use both dtls or tls means it's optional but for vbond it's mandatory that they should use dtls so vbond we don't have even option to choose tls they are always using dtls now one of the potential reason for this may be that of the dtls connection may be faster although it is uh, not much reliable like tls but still 
uh, what we want from vbond we want from vbond is to do the authentication authentication related to all the control and data plane devices either they are joining the fabric or they are leaving the fabric in both the case first of all they have to go and inform the vbond and suppose if that time we are looking for reliability or something uh, so it's not that fair enough that we should use DTLS connection with vbond so that's the reason that vbond is using dtls that's the one of the reason but uh, other reason may be that dtls tunnel is faster maybe there are some sort of acceleration related to a dtls that is not there in uh, tls uh, maybe some hardware related stuffs as well that number of dtls channel could be more with compared to tls channel in terms of manageability of the channels so these could these may be the probable uh, answer that choose a versus b but here is the caution when we are doing the network design at that time we should prefer the highest level of security so at that time what we should do that for the v manage for v bond sorry uh, for v manage v smart and the edge devices we should use tls and obviously the uh, v bond is by default using dtls so it's uh, fair enough to use such type of design model in terms of control plane and data plane devices question number 18 how we can achieve high availability in v bond v smart and v manage now it's actually a very tricky question because for all the controllers we have a different methodology to reach the high availability so first thing should be here that what type of controller deployment do you have do you have cloud hosted or do you have in premises now if you have cloud hosted deployment then at that time uh, mostly cisco will take care of the high availability of the uh, control plane devices but still um, how you are going to do the connection uh, with the v edge of cs devices to the v smart and v manage that's again important thing at least the connection or the control connection between the control plane and the data plane should be optimized either it's a cloud based uh, deployment or it's a on prem in both case we have to do like that so suppose when we are inside on-prem in that case or in that uh, scenario what about the high availability so we are doing the dns method for v bond that means suppose you have three to four v bond and those v bond instead of giving the v bond ip we can use the url or some dns and that dns will be mapped with different different v bonds so if one v bond or two bond is v bond is unreachable still with the url you are able to reach to the remaining v bond correct now for v manage we are doing the clustering so we are creating at least three v manage in a cluster and access is for recommendation and we should have very low level of uh, latency in between these v manage because the databases are going to be replicated across the v manage so you have your one logical distributed switch maybe inside the data center or across the data center so with dvs you can have the v manage inside the cluster right now finally and the important one what about v smart so for v smart we have a technology called affinity and what this affinity technology is doing or the strategy is doing is so let me try to explain here because it's very important that we should design proper method for vsmart so suppose if you have three vsmart in a data center suppose i have dc1 and i have dc2 and suppose i have one two and three devices so what will happen we know that uh, all the data plane they will go and form the connection with all the vsmart correct and suppose if we have 
multiple paths they will go and reach uh, to that particular VS smart with multiple ISP so that means in this case you have three VS smart and then you have three devices that means your number of control connection is nine now think if you have 2000 devices then your number of connection will become 6k number of connection in number of control connection 6000 control connection unnecessarily you are managing and suppose if any due to any reason this data center is down you don't have redundancy so this is not a scalable design uh, rather than what we can do here is that we can group the VS smart so suppose I have group 10 and I have only two VS smart here and then I have other group here and in that group suppose I have only one VS smart so group number 20 and then one of the suppose I have two VS device so for one of the VS device this is the primary and this is the secondary or backup for other set of uh, VS devices this is the primary VS smart and these are the secondary or the backup link correct so primary and backup link you can uh, go and use the connection now if you go and see the number of active control connection in this case that will be drastically reduced to so from 6k they will go and reduce to 2k and still you have a better redundancy that what we have in the 6k so this is the affinity feature inside the VS smart designing and we can reach the highest level of redundancy with this particular feature inside the VS smart all right so remember we want DNS we manage cluster and VS smart we have to do the affinity feature Question number 19, uh, it may be scenario based that the interviewer can ask you that suppose if I have data center one, data center two, two branches and two ISP, then you have to go and create a global policy or global rule. Like branch one will prefer DC one and then fall back to DC number two and vice versa with branch two will prefer DC two and fall back to DC one. So how we can achieve that now in this case say for example you have DC 1 and branch 1 you have one ISP you have DC 2 and you have branch 2 as well and you have other ISP so your connection is like ECMP by default equal cost multipathing but what we can do at the level of VS smart we can go and create the rule in a way that the OMP preference so for example OMP preference for DC1 will be so for example this is 500 and for branch 1 when you are applying the policy to branch 1 and in this direction you can give so for example 100 likewise for branch 1 you can go and give the OMP preference as 500 and OMP preference for DC1 will be less than 500 say for example 100 then in that in this case what will happen that for branch 1 the primary path will be DC1 but the fallback will be DC2 and a reverse will be the case for branch 2 whose primary path is a DC2 and fallback will be DC1. So with few lines of uh, global policy, you can see that you can achieve this target. Although this will be uh, possible with uh, obviously the routing uh, use case with BGP or maybe any other protocol if we go and tune it. In terms of ST1, it's very easy to do it with the help of OMP route preference. Now we move to question number 20. Question number 20 is also very important and frequently asked question. That what is TLOG and what is the significance of TLOG? We know that transport locator is the glue factor. So your TLOG is the glue factor 
for the underlay and the overlay so your overlay is nothing but uh, OMP protocol say overlay that is your OMP and underlay may be any of the IGP protocol but the key determining factor is transport locator with help of transport locator the VA smart they will go and reach out to the devices over VPN 0 or they will go means this VS devices will go and create the data path or uh, they will create the IPsec tunnels now in this case suppose if we have two different ISP and we can mark this as a color as well so T lock let me write here T lock is nothing but transport locator and they have three major attributes they have system IP color and encapsulation this color may be uh, we can think at this point of time is the abstraction for any of the service provider or the carrier encapsulation is IPsec most of the time and system IP is the system IP uh, over the box so the next follow-up question here is that okay what does it mean by restrict when we are using restrict so to answer that suppose if you have your VS device and you have two different color you have color MPLS and you have color internet and then the other side also they have MPLS and they have say for example internet now if you make this mode as a restrict so MPLS will form the IPsec only with MPLS and same is the case with the internet will go and form the IPsec tunnel only with internet now if we do not use the restrict so there may be chance that MPLS 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 internet 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 and internet MPLS but in case of restrict you have possibility number one and then you have possibility number three okay so that's the use case we have with the mode called restrict now we reach to question number 21 where the interviewer is asking that can VH slash CH create IP6 slash I tunnel with non steven devices or cloud providers like AWS Azure if yes then what type of tunnel now this question is mix of many questions so first question may be that either i have v edge device that's a webtela box or i have cisco devices c edge over vpn 0 or vrf 0 can they form ipsec tunnel say with asa firewall or palo alto or any of the other vendor device like Juniper or any other so for this the answer is no they will form the IPsec tunnel over VPN 0 only with the same WebTela devices or with the same SD-WAN devices the next question so this is part one the next part is so can VHCS devices can form the IPsec tunnel or Ike based tunnel at least with AWS Azure. Now, again, uh, here there is some difference. So, CES devices, those are the ISR or other devices, iOS XE. And again, you can see the platform. So, next generation WebTela devices are ISR 1110, uh, which is supporting everything. They are like WebTela but for example asr and isr devices where you have upgraded the image and then you are uh, using the uh, features or using the services of sd -band. so in that case first of all they are not supporting the cloud integration so they are not supporting cloud on ramp based on uh, software as a service infra as a service so no point of making the tunnel over VPN 0 but yeah you can go and use the service side VPN to reach out to these clouds correct 
Now, the next question, what about VHS? VH and next generation Viptela devices or ISRs, they can go and create the Ike based channel with AWS and we can monitor over the vManage dashboard. That's a two statement. Uh, with AWS, they are forming Ike version one, but Azure, they can go and form Ike version two as well. Okay. So this is the answer for this particular question. Again, you can go and check the new release note at point of recording. Cisco has already released 20.0 as well. So you can go and refer that as well. What are the features we have in 20.0 image? Question number 22. It is highly recommended that before going for a Steven interview, we should prepare this question. What is the significance of OMP? Explain the best path selection in OMP. Now the significance of OMP is that OMP is the overlay. So if you don't have overlay, then even there is no concept of control plane and data plane. So that's the significance of OMP because it's the overlay for us. The other very important aspect of OMP is that the only protocol and that is with respect to routing that we as smart understand is OMP. So the communication channel between we as smart and we edge is only OMP. Uh, again, uh, we can frame this in other word. So suppose uh, if the we as smart have to exchange routing information, have to push policy information, have to uh, give or have to share the IPsec key information. All these critical information will be shared uh, with respect to OMP. So OMP is a protocol who is helping VS Smart to communicate to VS devices. And again, we know that with respect to VS Smart, we can create certain rules. So if we tweak with OMP, and that's the global routing we have or the global routing table we have. So if we tweak the global routing table, then we can do certain things like service chaining, traffic engineering, route blocking or filtering, etc. at the level of global. Now OMP is active within the VS Smart and uh, from VS Smart to VH. This is not active in between VH to VS devices. And that's why the VS devices, they have local intelligency because they don't have the global intelligency, means they can communicate with VS Smart. But one VH with other VH cannot do the communication with OMP. They have to go via VS Smart. Or they have to get the information via the VS Smart. And that's the significance and the distinction we have in terms of global intelligence and the local intelligence and who has what type of role. Correct? Now, the second question is that what is the best path selection criteria in SD WAN? So, for that, I have a few slides. And these slides you'll find we have point number one to seven. Point number one to three, at least you'll find very much uh, Cisco type. So first of all, you should have valid uh, route. You should have validity of OMP. Means OMP should have cer certain valid attributes to start with. Then the point number two is that OMP route is valid. Uh, if it has been learned from same WebTLA devices, select the OMP route with lowest ID. So we can think like this that lower is better. So for example, OSPF and EIGRP, who will win? EIGRP because it has a lower ID value. Likewise here also the same type of point we can analyze. Then uh, higher route preference. We know in case of BGP, uh, weight and uh, local preference if these guys are high then um, those routes has much weightage those route has much preference to win here also the same case and we have discussed this type of route preference in case of uh, uh, 
local and uh, let me show you the question number so we have discussed this in question number 19 as well where if you give the route preference for branch 1 to dc1 higher then it will prefer dc1 and then it will fall back to dc2 so first two second point uh, first second and third points are very much cisco type even point number four so first it will check the omp route preference if omp route preference for certain routes are same then it will go and check t lock preference again if the t lock preference is also by default you haven't set it then it will go and check the fifth criteria that the origin of route so it's static abgp ospf intra ivgp etc and we know this is also indirectly related to ad value so static route ad value is lower than evgp than ospf and then i ivgp so for example 120 110 and 200 okay then finally if all these a point from one to five is same then it will go and match six where it will go and check higher route uh, OMP route with higher router ID and then finally it will go and check means if all the criteria are same from one to six then it will go and check the higher private IP address of the OMP route okay now suppose if one two seven is same so at that time they will go and do the ecmp equal cost multipathing now there is one note here in this paragraph in this um, block that we should understand what does it mean so suppose once you have your ipsec channel up and running that ipsec channel is associated with bft so bft is going to track the liveliness of the ipsec channel if the tunnel is up and live then only they will go and install the fib table suppose if tunnel is down if your bft is uh, giving some sort of complaint that the destination is unreachable so at that time the edge devices they will tell that we are smart that i don't have destination for this tunnel then you can go and delete the entry for this particular destination and that entry is nothing but the fib entry so remember there are different type of tables there is omp table then there is routing table and then there is fib table that is the uh, table that is used for actual data movement and that's something ready to go tunnel or ready to go uh, table so from omp table the routing table will get der derived and from routing table the fib table will get derived and this fib table uh, is tracked with the bft if bft is complaining that means fib will go down but still you have the omp and routing entries all right question number 23 uh, this is also very important that what is the key difference between the control policy and the data policy can a control policy be a data policy and vice versa this is very uh, tricky so control policy we know that we have two type of policy let me write here so we have control policy and then we have data policy now control policy is so first of all unidirectional this is bidirectional control policy will reside so c a e configure apply and execution will happen at the level of v smart but for data policy c a will happen at the level of v smart while the execution will happen at the level of v h the third difference is that uh, these are so these data policy will be downloaded by vh devices and they will be residing at the level of vsmart so these are the basic three difference between the control policy and data policy now the next tricky question we have is that can a control policy be a data policy or vice versa so the answer is no it can't be control policy 
cannot become data policy and vice versa but uh, the same type of problem can be answered from the control policy and from the data policy so what does it mean so for example one of the uh, policy service chaining i can go and create with respect to control policy and with respect to data policy as well now service chaining is that you are redirecting your traffic towards certain security devices like firewall etc if you create the service chaining with respect to control policy then you have to apply it in two direction or at least you have to go and create two policy into out out to in but the good thing about data policy service chaining is that if you go and create data policy with respect to service chaining or service chaining in terms of data policy then you have to create it once because data policy is bidirectional applied in two direction so the control policy and data policy cannot be exchanged but the rules that control policy can do can be achieved from data policy not all the rules uh, but few of the rules can be done via data policy and can be done via the control policy as well so now we move to question number 24 that is scenario based question which is asking that we have to tell that how many OMP session and control connection with respect to VS smart one in case that we have two data center two branches two isp each data center and the branches having two edge devices uh, we have one we manage one we bond and three we smart we smart one we smart two we smart three so what i can do let me open the whiteboard let me draw the diagram so as per the question we have dc1 so i have dc1 two devices we have dc2 two devices we have branch one and we have branch two we have two isp isp1 and isp2 but we have one we manage we have one we bond but three we smart now for this VS smart uh, I'll use different colors. So for example, I have VS smart one, VS smart two, VS smart three. For this VS smart, how many OMP connection? We know that OMP pair is forming within the VS smart. So he has two OMP pair within the controller or within the control plane then how many devices we have first of all how many sites we have four sites so four into two means we have total eight devices that means eight here so total number of omp session that the vs smart one have is having is actually eight then how many control connection question number two so control connection means that dtls or tls connection that is purely based we know that is based upon the number of isp so for example uh, for vs smart one obviously he has the control connection over uh, vs1 and vs vs2 and vs3 and if these vs smarts are separated across the controller then that number will increase so let's try to figure out that how many DTLS and the TLS connections we have. Let me quickly clean a few of the things. So OMP we are done 10. Now let's try to do the calculation with respect to the TLS or the TLS connection with respect to one of the VS, VS1. So VS1 can go and reach to this and can reach to this over this direction as well because you have isp1 and isp2 so that means that with one device he has two control connection so you have total 
eight devices into two. The total number of control connection that he has with the edge devices are 16. Again, if we have VS1, VS2, VS3, and V manage one and V bond one, then we should go and add the number of control connection with these devices as well. And suppose if they are separated across, although the question here is that they are in the same area. Okay, so in that case, you can count at least one control connection here, one here, one here, one here. So depending upon number of uh, uh, ISPs if in between, otherwise 16 plus four. So minimum they have, with this arrangement, they have 20 control connection. Okay, so that will be the answer for this particular question. Let's stop. Having same scenario in the mind, now uh, we have other question. We have discussed the question related to VSmart. Now the question is related to the same setup. In terms of branch one VH1, how many OMP pair, how many control connection, how many data connection or data plane tunnel, that is the IPsec tunnel. In case if the site ID of the branches are different, plus in case if both the branch they have same site ID. Okay, so let's try to figure out this also. We can go back and delete our old diagram, at least few portions. So we have this type of topology. And then let me clean this. So this we have to answer with respect to branch one. Let me try to draw one circle here for branch two VH. So this we have to answer with branch one. Say so this is VH one and this is VH two. All right, so VH one and VH two. And likewise, this is branch two, VH one and VH two. Now here the site ID is 300, here the site ID is 400. Focus on this, how many OMP connection? We know this fact that OMP, they will form, the edge devices will form only with VSmart. So that means one, two, three. He has three OMP pair. Now the second question is, how many control connection? Control connection is over two transports. So let me delete few of the lines here. When we are talking about control connection to reach to VS smart one, he can go like this and then he can go like this. So that means that uh, three VS smart into two ISP, six control connection with VS smart and then any of the link will be go and preferred for we manage. So six plus one means seven control connection with the control plan devices. Now we don't have direct tunnel with V bond one. That is the transient tunnel. That means if anything will happen, then only the devices will go and contact with V bond. So that's why we don't have any tunnel. At least the active tunnel with V bond. So we have the uh, tunnel. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 means seven control connections we have. Now the follow-up question here is that if we have different type of site IDs, yes, we have different type of site ID. We have site ID 300 and 400. So in that case, how many IPsec tunnel? So the answer is that if you have different site ID, obviously, he will go and form IPsec tunnel here and then like this. Again, it depends that the mode of color is restrict or without restrict. If it is without restrict, then we know that the combination is MPLS, 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 internet, 
internet MPLS and then the internet internet. So assuming that the mode is restrict. So in that case, they will go and form tunnel like this. So how many? Let's answer that also. How many tunnels they will form? Let me draw here. So number of tunnels will be for this VH for this device is two. So if the site IDs are different, your total number of devices are eight into two. So number of IPsec tunnel for this device will be 16. How? You just check one of the data center, DC1. So DC1, how many tunnels we have? One, two, three, and four. So four plus four plus four. Since in these devices we haven't allowed command like same tunnel, uh, tunnel within same site ID. So here you don't have tunnel because they are in the same site ID. So this calculation should be a little bit corrected. Actually, the actual number of tunnels should be 12. If you have three different sites with two, two devices and two ISP. Now the next follow up question here is, so let me answer this answer for number of IPC tunnel will be 12, not 16, okay? Now the next follow up question here is that in case that the site IDs are same. So suppose here also I have site ID 300 and here also I have site ID 300. Then what will happen? Uh, out of 12 you have to subtract 4 because same site ID will assume that they are in the same location and hence they will not form the IPsec connection. So that means your number of uh, IPsec tunnels will become eight in this case, and that will be the answer.